So putting the printer together is actually quite simple. If we go to the manual, we can see that step one shows us that we're gonna put the gantry on top of the base and then there's two bolts on each side. They're gonna mount it. So these are the bolts and we can see they're quite long. So if we look at the base, we can see a cutout here on the side and this is where the gantry side is gonna actually slide down into. Same thing on the other side. Now, one thing you need to look at if your wires or cables are all nice and happy. Now, mine look like they're somewhat tangled or twisted up. So I think I need to flip this thing around a couple times to kind of get rid of these tangles. There we go, that looks like it's pretty happy and straight. And then we're just gonna slide down into those grooves on both sides of the printer. So mine's not easily going down because distance between here is too short, or at least initially. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise this whole x-axis up. There is a belt on top that I'm turning to bring it up. Or you can just turn the coupler here also to bring it up and down. All right, so now that I got it squeezed over, it seemed to go down to where it needs to go and it's kind of holding itself. And actually it does look like that I need to go down even more. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap it down. Okay, yeah, so you do want it to sit right down at the table looks like, or the flat surface. Okay, so that is the correct way as the bolts are going in easily. And if we go to the other side, hopefully you guys can see maybe. It's pretty much the same thing here. And we're gonna grab the large wrench and run these bolts all the way down. So I'm not gonna tighten them up all the way just in case. We'll go ahead and run the other side down. And yeah guys, because this printer pretty much is pre-built and all we gotta do is just connect a few things, this makes it really friendly for anyone that is getting started, which wasn't always the case for Creality, especially back in the day. It was more like a kit that you have to assemble. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and snug this side up really good. So you don't have to go crazy, as this type of connection is quite strong and because it's grooved in, it's very stable. Which by the way, I love this design. And just more rigid for the whole Z axis going up. Back to the other side, snug these up, and we are done with step one. So for step two, we're gonna be installing the screen. The mount does clip off. And if we look at it, we can see we got some T-nuts with bolts. And these are actually gonna line up right here into the channel in the front. So the first thing we need to do is cut the T-nuts loose so these can move around. And all we're gonna do is just line them up into these two grooves. And so these two will go on the bottom and this one will go on top, and just like this. But yeah, once it falls in, all we gotta really do is unscrew the bolt and then screw it back in where the T-nut will turn in the channel and then lock in. So if it doesn't work out the first time, just keep trying it, just unscrew it and then screw it back in and the T-nut will turn and lock in. So once you do all three, your bracket should be nice and tight in there. So we can grab our wire that comes out from the bottom and we can connect it to our display just like that and then this should just clip right in going down and that's it we're pretty much done with the display and you can adjust it to go back or front however you like it i think mine here looks pretty good and so for step three we're going to install our spool holder which is quite simple it just clips on the side and for step four it's asking us to look at the voltage setting on the back of the printer and that's pretty much all the steps in the manual so not too much more information about the assembly but we're going to go a little bit more in depth because there's quite a few important things that we need to adjust and check. So let's go ahead and put on our spool holder, which by the way, clips on right in the back here. And before we do that, we can go ahead and connect this Z motor. And there's a plug here that's right next to it. And it says Z. And actually guys, on the other side, we have the same thing. So yeah, that's pretty much the extent of plugging things in, including the screen. But as far as the spool holder, basically if we clip it on and it simply just sits on the rail and clips down and you can move it farther or closer away. And we do have a nice little rubber foot there. And so your spool will go on here and then it will feed up to the filament detector. Now if you want, you can flip this around to the other side, which might make more sense because we have wires here up front. And kind of move this thing more closer to the motor here, right underneath the motor, because it does go all the way under there. And I think I do prefer it this way better. And then when you tuck it away, it really tucks away nicely as the spool just kind of folds right behind the bed. I think I prefer it this way, but we'll see how that turns out as we print. Now in the manual, it did want us to go straight here to the back and check our voltage, which hopefully you guys can see, there's a little switch right there. And ours is set to 230, which we need to change it to 115. Move the tab over 
to the other side and now we can see 115 under there so yeah make sure you don't forget to do that before you power on the printer and as you guys can see it's not very hard to put this thing together adjust a few bolts through the side a couple plugs to plug in the screen and it's good to go so yeah very great for beginners but we do need to check a few things that are quite important which are going to be the rollers on the bed and also the belts on the x and y and the hot end itself has rollers also so let's start with the bed and we'll probably have to go to the side here but yeah you can see there's some rollers under there and there are three of them so there's three stationary and then three adjustable on the other side so adjustable ones do have eccentric nuts and i'm going to go ahead and move the screen out of the way so we can reach them better but what we're going to do is we're going to just stick our hand under there kind of roll them around and see how tight they are and right away i can tell that the middle one here is completely loose the one in the back is too tight the one in the front is way too tight so you're going to grab this wrench that was included and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the eccentric nut to loosen the roller so you want both sides of the rollers to kind of just barely squeeze around and you should be able to turn them in one spot kind of like a little burnout with some friction and so this one actually feels good so the bottom line is you want to try to get as loose as possible but not wobble on the bed so and it will take a little bit back and forth until you can get that right and actually guys i noticed that the middle roller actually adjusts on the other side and see if we can adjust the center roller so when they do have three rollers like this, it's a little more tricky. You know, keep checking and adjusting and eventually you'll get it. And I think mine is pretty good right there. And if you move it back and forth, you should have a really smooth and even roll. If you have any kind of jumping or it feels funny, you know, keep checking your rollers and adjusting them. And as long as you're not too tight, you should be good. And also if you're too loose, you'll know by your bed moving around. So. We also need to check our rollers on the x-axis, which is this hot end here, and mine are way too tight, and when I move it, I can hear a lot of jerkiness and really hard tension. So the adjustable eccentric nut is on the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it until these rollers feel pretty good. Okay, so I'm a little too loose now, and looks like maybe right there is pretty good. And sure enough, that feels much better. Now I can still feel a little bit of bumpiness and that's because these things were tightened so hard and they've kind of indented a little flat spot on the wheels. So over time, as it runs around, it will kind of go away, but I'm gonna loosen mine just a little more to see if I can get rid of that completely. Okay, yeah, that feels much better. So I'm very loose right now, but I'm not wobbling. And this is where you wanna be for that perfect roll where it's really smooth. Now another place we can adjust is on the sides here. We got a couple rollers on the outside and then an adjustable one on the inside. Same thing for this side. Now these are not as critical unless they're really tight and you can't move them, you wanna adjust them. So on mine, this side is pretty good and this other side is decent too, but I think it needs to be loosened a bit. All right, yeah, that does feel a little better. And this side is still good too. So yeah, just remember that you don't have to get the side perfect as we do have dual Z axes and we're tethered and the whole Z just moves very slow and not very much. So yeah, get them as close as you can, but don't worry about it too much. But yeah, other than that, that's all our wheels. So let's flip around to the front. So you do want to check your belts also. And we've got a tensioner here up front for the Y. And you don't want this to be too tight, but also not too loose because this bed is pretty big and it's glass. So a little tighter than looser for the Y axis. And you also have a little hole here up through the top where you can see how your pulley is lining up. And for the X, we have a tensioner here, which also can be loosened and tightened. And for the X, I definitely like to keep mine pretty loose. And you want to be really careful because with these knobs, you can't really feel how much tension you're putting on there. And these belts don't really like being over tightened. So just very slight tightness where there's no slop and you should have very smooth movement back and forth. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the things that needs to be adjusted. And as you guys see there, it's not too hard to get this thing going and get started out of the box. 